a troubling warning from researchers. Nowhere is immune from plastic pollution. A team of scientists from the Alfred Wegener Institute, they found a massive concentration of microplastics suspended in Arctic sea ice. Uh, microplastics are little bits of trash about the size of a sesame seed or less. Samples contained ship paint, cigarette filters, food packaging, synthetic fibers, and more. And just because they're tiny does not mean that they're not dangerous. Microorganisms like crustaceans often mistake the microplastics for food. Fish feed on those crustaceans, then we humans, we eat the fish. You can see the evidence of microplastics in the food chain even here in Hong Kong. Recently, Greenpeace found 60% of flathead gray mullet, it's a popular fish in the region, contained plastic fragments. Now, I want to get more on what scientists found in the Arctic from Dr. Ilka Pekin. She is a sea ice ecologist at the Alfred Wegener Institute and first author on the study. And thank you so much for joining us here on the program. This is a, a, a landmark yeah. study. Thank Were you. you surprised by the variety, the sheer number of different kinds of plastics you found in Arctic sea ice? Yes, actually, we were quite surprised about the high numbers, which was uh, up to more than 12,000 uh, particles per liter of melted sea ice. So these are really huge concentrations and much higher as has been previously we found. And the highest concentrations we actually found were coming from polyethylene. And polyethylene is a typical material which is used for packaging, like bottles and so on. So single use products. And uh, it is actually the most produced um, plastic in the world. So it's no wonder that we have this high concentration from that. But we also found a lot of uh, particles which could belong to ship paint. Uh, and we also found nylon, which is indicative for um, for shipping, uh, for fishing gear. And uh, we also found some cellulose acetate, which uh, is indicated by cigarette butts. So uh, quite a huge variety of different parts there. And we were actually able to, what by, by sectioning the sea ice cores in different horizons, we were actually able to backtrack the different areas. And so you can see that uh, certain areas in the Arctic have a different footprint of the polymer types you will find in them. So for instance, we found one, um, yeah, sorry. It's so fascinating how you were able to find these microplastics, identify the microplastics, and also track the origin of these microplastics from the Arctic and beyond. Um, at the moment, they are stuck in the sea ice. They're kind of locked in the ice. What well, we know that ice is melting. So what's going to happen with these microplastics? Are they going to be released back into the ocean? And what happens then? So for sure, they, they will be released, uh, particularly if the ice uh, is reaching areas where it comes to, for instance, warm Atlantic water, where it starts to melt. And uh, so it will be released in the water column again. And from there, it can be picked up either in the ecosystem or it might also aggregate because it uh, can be um, combined with other um, or, uh, as a material which basically then uh, uh, helps them to aggregate and then sinks to the bottom of the seafloor. We actually found in another study by uh, Melanie Bergman last year that particularly in the area where we have the marginal sea ice zone, so that means where a lot of the ice is coming in and out, that in that particular region we can find the highest uh, microplastic concentrations also in the deep sea sediments. Yeah, and then once they're released into deep sea sediment, into the seafloor, into the ocean, will be released into the food chain, wildlife affected humans as well. So what's the solution here, especially when we're talking about microplastic pollution? Is it even possible to attempt to remove these tiny, tiny particles from ocean waters and sea ice? So I think it's, it, this is not possible. If we think about that 70% of, of, of our planet is actually uh, belonging to the ocean and we, we are talking about particles which are smaller than the 20s of a millimeter. So I think there is no way to, to get it out. So we, we dumped a lot of material in already. And uh, I think what we need to do is we really need to close the tap of this plastic, which is coming year to year into the oceans. So, and I think that really, is something where everybody for, of us can do something. We really need to change our careless use of plastic products and start to choose more environmental friendly alternatives. We also uh, should get the policymakers and the companies to really work on this, that we kind of ban certain products and also enhance the production of biodegradable plastics. 
You know, this is such an alarming study, but it's an important one. And Dr. Beacon, we thank you and your team for sharing your findings with us. And do take care. And thank you for joining us here on CNN.